El Nino will emerge in 2024. Brace yourself for catastrophic weather occurrences. Hello everyone, welcome back to Z, and today we will see El Nino break out in 2024 and its features. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive our daily videos. After years of praying to all the saints in heaven for a few drops of rain, Californians were abruptly confronted with disastrous floods caused by Tropical Storm Hillary last August, which also impacted Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada. The deluge caused widespread floods and torrents of debris, with mud flows, rocks, and trees demolishing homes and businesses and engulfing automobiles. To put that in context, the Parch Death Valley received more rain in one day than it normally receives in a year. This was extremely unusual because hurricanes rarely impact California. The first one hit the shores in 1939, and the last one was in 1997, more than 25 years ago. However, one thing is certain, the majority of the storms that have hit the Golden State, as California is known, have occurred when another natural cyclical force known as El Nino was in full action. El Nino is not a new occurrence, and research into it has progressed to the present day. El Nino is a cyclical occurrence capable of influencing the climate and many other characteristics worldwide. It is not an ocean current or a one-time natural whim. Following the initial signs reported by the Copernicus Mission Monitoring System, a complex Earth satellite observation program launched in 1998 by a consortium of space agencies, we can now say that El Nino is returning, and it's likely to be a grand return because its disruptions could combine with the ongoing climate change, according to experts. The concern is that a particularly powerful El Nino event in 2024 will make it the hottest year ever recorded on our planet. El Nino is a climatic event that happens in the Pacific Ocean every few years. It is distinguished by extraordinary warmth of the surface waters off South America's western coast, which produces alterations in air circulation and impacts the climate in many parts of the world. Droughts, floods, storms, fires, and other extreme weather phenomena can be caused by El Nino. This phenomena was less violent many years ago because it occurred on a world with lower temperatures that had not yet been worsened by the climate catastrophe. Now the scenario is different, new heat records are expected, though it's difficult to forecast what will really happen. But what causes El Nino, and what are the consequences? To comprehend this, we must first grasp the usual Pacific Ocean conditions. The trade winds, the ones that moved Christopher Columbus ships from Europe to America in the Atlantic, normally blow from east to west, propelling surface seas toward Asia and Australia. As a result, there is a pressure difference between the two sides of the ocean, higher pressure in the east and lower pressure in the west. This discrepancy boosts the trade winds, pushing even more water westward. This results in a circular current known as the Walker Cell. The walker sill primarily has two effects. On the one hand, it cools eastern surface waters, enabling the upwelling of deep, nutrient-rich waters that support marine life and fisheries. On the other hand, it warms surface seas in the west, forming a warm water mass known as the Warm Pool, which stretches from Indonesia to the Central Pacific Islands and heats the air above it, resulting in clouds and rain. However, the trade winds occasionally weaken or change direction, allowing the bulk of warm water to migrate eastward. This marks the start of El Nino. Nino interrupts the walker cell, lowering the pressure difference between the two sides of the ocean and weakening the trade winds even further. Warm water moves toward South America, limiting the upwelling of deep and nutrient-rich seas, reducing marine life and fisheries. So one could wonder, why be concerned about a phenomenon of local relevance that only impacts South America's west coast? Unfortunately, this is not the case. El Nino has now been proven to have worldwide consequences, affecting air circulation patterns and influencing climate in other locations. El Nino, for example, can cause milder winters in North America and Europe while simultaneously increasing storms in California and the Gulf of Mexico. El Nino has the potential to increase hurricanes in the eastern Atlantic while weakening them in the western Pacific. 
El Nino can also have an effect on agricultural production, human health, biodiversity, and the economies of many countries. Furthermore, the tropical Pacific Ocean is so wide that a 1 or 2 degree increase in surface temperature is more than enough to destabilize global climate. A slightly warmer ocean evaporates more water, which heats the atmosphere and fuels tropical storms. Convective movement, a type of heat transmission characteristic of fluids, then transports this extra energy to cooler regions to the north and south on both sides of the equator. The rotation of the Earth likewise spreads this energy to the east. As a result, heat and moisture are widely redistributed. El Nino is a prime illustration of the teleconnection of global weather systems, according to climatologists. El Nino's warm current normally lasts 9 to 12 months, but it is not uncommon for its cycle of activity to last up to 18 months. It is most common between December and February, but it can occur at any time of year. El Nino was named in the 19th century. At the time, fishermen in northern Peru noticed that the sea water temperature rose almost every year, around the end of December, approaching Christmas. This warming was linked to the advent of a warm ocean current, which they termed the El Nino current after the child Jesus. El Nino means Jesus in Spanish. It's a matter of economic survival for them, and it still is today. The large, sparkling shoals of anchovies on which their livelihood depends prefer cooler waters and vanish when El Nino arrives. But be cautious, El Nino is part of a natural cycle known as the ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, which alternates between warming, El Nino, and cooling, La Nina, phases of the Pacific Ocean. La Nina is the polar opposite of El Nino. It happens when the trade winds are stronger than usual, causing more cold water to go eastward and warmer water to move westward. La Nina has the opposite climatic impacts of El Nino. For example, La Nina can induce colder winters in North America and Europe while also causing greater rain in Indonesia and Australia. What has maybe not been stressed sufficiently in recent years when discussing global warming is that the numbers achieved in 2022 and 2021 are quite close to absolute records but happened in years chilled by La Nina. And they are still warmer than El Nino years, even the most recent ones. So El Nino is a complex and fascinating occurrence that demonstrates how climate is determined by a delicate balance between the ocean and the atmosphere, and how alterations in one part of the Earth can have ramifications in another. El Nino also pushes us to better understand the systems that regulate climate and predict future changes so that we can adapt and mitigate its harmful consequences. However, why are we telling you all of this? The explanation is simple. Hundreds of specialists believe that in 2024, the world will see an unprecedented climate event with disastrous effects for the Earth's climate and life. According to the most recent forecasts, a very strong El Nino event could occur in 2023 and especially 2024, potentially setting a record for global average temperatures and bringing the planet closer than ever to a warming threshold that scientists and policymakers warn could be potentially harmful. According to some predictions, 2024 might be the first year in which global temperatures reach 1.5 degree cover pre-industrial levels, a vital threshold for averting the most catastrophic effects of climate change. This indicates that irreversible repercussions such as polar ice melting, sea level rise, ocean acidification, biodiversity loss, increased infectious illnesses, and lower food security are possible. Furthermore, the significant El Nino event could impact long-term climate patterns by shifting energy distribution between the tropics and polar regions, influencing ocean thermohaline circulation, and altering carbon, nitrogen, and water biogeochemical cycles. These consequences could have an impact on biodiversity, agriculture, drinking water, human health, and global security. The disastrous implications of exceeding the 1.5 degrees Celsius barrier are numerous and intertwined. Some of the most significant include the melting of polar ice and high-altitude glaciers, which causes sea level rise and the extinction of numerous animal and plant species. 
it is anticipated that a 1.5 degrees Celsius increase in temperature will result in a 0.4 meter rise in sea levels by 2100, while a 2 degrees Celsius increase will result in a 0.6 meter rise. This would expose coastal residents and infrastructure to phenomena such as erosion, saline intrusion, flooding, and storms. When carbon dioxide is absorbed by water, it generates carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of the ocean. Marine species that build calcium carbonate shells or skeletons, such as corals, mollusks, and crabs, are harmed by this process. When species fail to adapt to climate change and lose their habitats or food supplies, there is a loss of terrestrial and aquatic biodiversity. With a 1.5 degrees Celsius increase in temperature, 6% of insects, 8% of plants, and 4% of vertebrates may lose more than half of their climatic range by 2100. These percentages would rise to 18%, 16%, and 8%, respectively, with a 2 degrees Celsius increase. Infectious diseases become more prevalent when climate change supports the spread of infections or vectors such as mosquitoes or ticks. According to a new study, a 1.5 degrees Celsius increase in temperature will have catastrophic and lasting health implications, including an increase in infectious diseases. These diseases can strike both humans and animals, resulting in fatalities, disability, and increased healthcare expenses. Reduced food security happens when climate change affects food availability and quality, affecting crops and livestock directly as well as indirectly altering supply and distribution chains. A 1.5 degrees Celsius increase in temperature might result in a 2% decline in world wheat yield, whereas a 2 degrees Celsius increase could result in a 7% decrease. Similarly, a 1.5 degrees Celsius increase in temperature might reduce worldwide maize production by 7%, while a 2 degrees Celsius increase could reduce productivity by 12%. This would imperil millions of people's food security and nutrition. Another unfavorable effect of a very strong El Nino is an increase in sickness. As temperatures rise, viruses multiply more quickly in vectors such as mosquitoes. Mosquitoes bite more frequently in hot weather. Drought, which occurs when humans collect more water in easily accessible containers, creates additional breeding places for insects. According to World Health Organization data, drought conditions related with El Nino boosted malaria cases in Colombia and Venezuela by more than a third over a two-decade period. Major malaria outbreaks in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Uganda were connected to a strong El Nino in 1997-98. Heavy rains and flooding this year have exacerbated Peru's worst-ever dengue epidemic, overwhelming hospitals in the north. Flooding can result in poor hygiene, which can lead to an increase in diarrheal infections. These diseases are exacerbated by displacement and overcrowding following a tragedy. An increase in cholera infections is predicted if the Horn of Africa is truly swamped with rain. Malnutrition makes people more vulnerable to diseases, especially children and the elderly. According to Save the Children, the turmoil caused by the 2015-16 El Nino left an additional 6 million children malnourished worldwide, three times the amount affected similarly by COVID-19. Furthermore, the epidemic has overburdened and undermined healthcare services. These are just a few of the potentially disastrous implications of breaching the 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming threshold in 2024. We cannot afford to face these eventualities, neither environmentally nor socially or economically. That is why it is critical to act now to cut greenhouse gas emissions and limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Only then will we be able to protect our planet and future generations. How should we deal with El Nino? El Nino is a natural occurrence that we have no control over. We may, however, try to track its progress and prepare for its consequences, both individually and collectively. 
El Nino can be tracked using a variety of observation and forecast technologies, including satellites, ocean buoys, climate models, and statistical indicators. These techniques enable us to watch the evolution of oceanic and atmospheric conditions and predict the effects of El Nino on different parts of the globe. To prepare for its effects, we can implement a variety of adaptation and mitigation strategies, including water resource management, crop and livestock protection, disease and disaster avoidance, international collaboration, and humanitarian assistance. These methods allow us to limit the vulnerability of communities and ecosystems to El Nino's harmful effects while also taking use of the beneficial opportunities it can provide. However, these steps will be insufficient until we address the underlying causes of climate change, which makes El Nino more regular and intense. To accomplish this, we must cut greenhouse gas emissions while also encouraging sustainable and resilient development. Only in this way can we keep disasters like El Nino from becoming increasingly destructive to the planet's and humanity's future. Whatever happens, one thing is certain, we will be unable to cope with the nightmare attempts we will confront next year. There is nothing else they can do, it will be a nightmare scenario. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.